what is going on guys, you boys see here, bringing you guys yet another Photoshop tutorial, improving your thumbnails uh, for your YouTube, I guess, thumbnails and subscriptions and stuff like that for your subscribers to see. I did a thumbnail tutorial probably like, f like five, six months ago, which is okay back then, but things have changed, you need more better designs all around to like improving your design overall, and more of a clean look, beautiful, just all around super just sweet, I guess you can say, but this video will basically just shut down that video and make this one like basically the upgrade for you guys. Uh, if you use that one as for reference and such like that, that's perfectly fine. But this video, way better. So I'm pretty sure if you watched my last one, you're probably watching this one. So thank you guys so much for the support in the last video as well. And so yeah, I'm going to be teaching these like uh, thumbnails like this. Uh, basically, really, really nice and clean. Uh, you can see like the uh, basically the lighting is really like all around just perfect, I guess you can say. Uh, you can see like the image in the background, a little like uh, accent of his picture in the background. Uh, so yeah, this video is actually going to be showing you guys as well as using like a face cam or yourself and the picture or the thumbnail itself, which is per like a lot of people do that as well, which is perfectly fine. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that and cut yourself out and put a little stroke on it, a little cool little setting of a stroke I have here. I'll show you guys in the video. And as well as using like a really clean font, uh, or not clean font, but you can use clean fonts if, if you want. You can use multiple fonts like I have here, multiple sizes like I did, and just all around using a clean thumbnail like layer style. And then as well as that, you can see the background is the, the Starburst effect, but I did it a little, I changed it up a little bit. I'll show you guys a lot more variety of the thumbnail effect itself to basically make more of a variety. Like, like you don't have to have the same exact Starburst effect every single time. If you know what the Starburst effect is, it's basically this. I don't know if you can see in the background, but this is going to be showing you to do this as well in the video itself. But you can see this right here is like little rectangles, like blast and little circle radius, I guess you can say. Something like that, but it's kind of like, you know, different. You get some more variety in it, could put some more effects on it. I'll show you how to do that as well. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to be uh, actually really quickly show you guys how to do this as well. Not do this, but actually show you guys how I did it. Uh, a lot of you guys, you know, asking how you do my th uh, thumbnails for Adapt Face Adapt. One of my good friends, I really do appreciate everything he's doing for me. Uh, he helps me out a lot doing, you know, YouTube and such, shouting me out. I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you came from his channel, hope you guys this video helps you out as well. But if you guys wanted to know how I do things like this, which is basically, if you do not know, uh, obviously it's simple to actually look at. But if you do not know, the YouTube background is plain, simple, white. Uh, which means like it's like you know a white color like plain white you know uh, so if you just use white in your thumbnails you guys can make some cool little designs I guess you can say uh, you can see right here it kind of looks like your the, the little hit marker things are actually like floating but this is actually the, still the exact same little rectangle but what I did in this thumbnail preset I have a uh, little two bars on the top and bottom uh, white like white bars right here so you can put little images and it'll look like it's floating around the thumbnail but all reality is still the same exact rectangle but just like cut out I just basically basically what I did was cut out the dimensions uh, and kind of like gave myself more space to work with around it, which is basically making it white since the uh, background of YouTube is white. Uh, default background is white. So yeah, something cool like that. Uh, let's just say if like you used, uh, you had your video was talking about getting a bite mark or something or having a, your, your title was like getting bit by my dog or something. I don't know, something like that. Random little title. And what you can do is use the pen tool, right? You can cut it out and make a little bite mark, I guess you can say, right? And just go on the bottom. And then on a new layer, Right click, fill path, uh, drop down, use white, press OK. And then in the video, in your subscription box for your subscribers, you'll see, they'll see like it looks like it's kind of cut out, but it's not because it's, you know, it just looks like it's blending. So in the background, I'm trying to show this, I'm trying to make it look white. I'm going to be a little drop shadow. It's going to be something like this, so it'll look like it's kind of like cut out in the background. Uh, in YouTube, there will be no drop, like little drop shadow settings in the background, so it won't like, you know, hurt it or anything. But anyways, it looks really, really cool. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your own thumbnails. And you can use white and such and just make a cool little design. I really wanted to show you guys that because it's how I do adapt. So anyways, there you guys go. Little secrets out. There you go. Anyways, we're going to be doing thumbnails like this. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get going. Uh, so first off, we're going to be showing you guys the basically how to do the Starburst effect, which is basically I did that in my last tutorial. I'm going to show you how to do it a better way. I kind of did like if you had really bad settings. So anyways, let's get going. We're going to make a new layer uh, all the way at the bottom. What I'm going to do is you can use two separate colors if you wish uh, to make the Starburst effect, which is basically a gradient, and then you like you you'll continuously see what I do next. But you can use two different colors. But for me, what I like to do now is basically choose one solid color. So I'm going to choose a, a orange or so. I'm going to press OK, and for my secondary color, I'm going to click back on the orange little square right here, click on it, and I want to just basically change the little like basically make it more either darker or lighter. But I just change the up and down bar on the right side right here. I uh, basically make it the same color but kind of a different tint of it. So when you go to your green, uh, when you go to your gradient, pressing G on your keyboard, or just clicking on your gradient tool, you click from like somewhere in the top middle, go to the top bottom, you can use a diagonal or something, and then you click, you see it's like basically the same exact color, but two different tints you can see closely, 
Uh, this is like a more of a lighter orange, it's more of a darker orange. And if you go to filter, distort, wave, and if you keep these settings right here, which is basically 115, and then like your that, that's the number of generators. You can copy these settings exactly. You'll get the exact like little uh, little bars here, which separated. Basically, number of generators you have to have it above 90, so your pixels are not like like mashed together or blended. Uh, looks really really good if you have it anywhere above 90 for your numbers of generators. And then just have your wavelength. Just move them. You can move them both. Uh, basically, like I, I'll say, like you, if you move it anywhere quickly, right? like slow down for a second. Uh, any like how however far you move it to the left is basically how many little rectangles you have. I don't know if you can see it that well. I should probably change this to more of a darker orange uh, really quickly. I'll change that really quick so you can see it better. So there we go. And then go to uh, Distort Wave. You'll see here, now you can see it more, uh, more, more clear. You can see that these little, little bars right here will be more and more uh, shrinked and it'll be more and more showing uh, as more as far as you go to the left. So I'm just going to keep it somewhere around here is good for me. And you can change your amplitude somewhere around here. And then for your scale, your first bar on the top will be all the way to the left, and then your, uh, the one on the bottom will be all the way to the right. And then you can always play around with this. You can do like things like this if you change it to warp around. It gives you a cool little setting, I guess you can say. A little cool little, uh, look, I don't even, it looks pretty cool to me. But you can just change around with those. You don't have to use the same exact thing. I'm just showing how to do the Starburst effect for like later on use. But we just keep it back on repeat uh, edge pixels. Press OK. And then you have these cool little rectangles here. And then what you do after that is still, uh, still in the same layer. You go to Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates, and then you press OK. And then you have a cool little Starburst effect like I was talking about before. And then so now if we want to do something different, uh, like to change the color and such, you can just use the Hue and Saturation effect. So this is probably where you would save as a template, and then you can just always change around. Uh, I'm just going to put my saturation up a little bit. And when I want to change my color, I just simply just change the Hue and Saturation thing from the top and bottom, uh, or from the top, and move it left and right to just change the color. And I'm just going to use this orange, like so. And then um, what I'm going to do now is actually to cut out the you know the person I'm going to be using, which is a phase adapt. Excuse me. Uh, in this case, probably be you or an object or something like I said before. So yeah. Anyways, that's the little starburst effect. Uh, before we do that, I, uh, really quickly as well. But uh, before we cut out uh, adapt right here, what we're gonna do is you can also go to filter, distort, and how to get those other uh, like uh, settings. Like I said, this is basically this. This is the background right here. Is still the the same little starburst effect. But what I did here is just went to filter, distort. Uh, twirl, pressed OK, and you get a little twirl right here. Uh, you can do more things. You can go to filter to store. You can use like zigzag or something if you want to use zigzag. Uh, get some really cool little abstract looking designs. Whatever you want to do, you can always use different, like anything in here right here besides this one. Uh, stay away from the, uh, from the top three. Anything below, like ri uh, ripple to zigzag. <clears throat> Play around those settings to get some different, like, you know, starburst effects, and it'll look cool. For this case, I'm going to use twirl, uh, twirl like I did before. <clears throat> Sorry, like my throat is like really itchy. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go to phase adapt right here, and we're gonna cut him out. Uh, I'm not gonna do it fully. I already have like the path right here cut out. But really quickly, I'm gonna show you guys how you would do it if you don't know how to use the pen tool. Uh, it's basically P on your keyboard for the shortcut, or this little thing right here, pen tool. <clears throat> and then if you did not know, what you basically do is just basically take the outline of whatever you're trying to cut out. If you're cutting out yourself, you cut out yourself. Uh, try not to cut out too much of yourself. But I'll show you how to make it a little more like a lot more cleaner. Uh, so really quickly on a purpose, I'm just gonna like do this. I'm gonna cut it out. Uh, once you do is just click and drag to make a little uh, like curves, like here, like quickly. So if I click and click, and then I, I'm still clicking, I'm holding it. If I just move up and down, drag, uh, get some curves and such. So that's how you basically like, uh, try and control your outline where you're cutting out yourself or your object. And if you hold Control on this little uh, little dot, you can move it a little bit better if you want to fix it or something. And if you hold Alt and then click on the endpoint, you see this little. Uh, this little uh, dot right here is basically means what if I click, it'll curve on that dot. So you don't want that. Just press Alt and click on that, and they can just keep on going. Uh, a little bit better. I'm just gonna just do this on purpose really quickly. So you can see how this is like still like this. If I try to click and move over here, it'll be like a little swirl because this is basically the end point of it. It's like curling, uh, curving itself. So if we pressed Alt and if we went there, you know, then it won't do that. So that's just how you would fix that. I'm pretty sure you're gonna have that trouble if you never use the pen tool. And I'm just gonna use the uh, little control button right here and move this. So I, like I said before, and then you just go around. You just try and cut it out as well as possible, right? And let's just say like accidentally you you like you like you're not perfect, but you can see like you see the little black right here. We'll show you how to fix that. So you would go around all the way through. You would cut it out. You would pen tool it out. All that cool stuff. But like I said, I have the pen tool already saved. Uh, oh no, I think I lost it. Did I lose it? Doing this? Oh no. Nope. There it is. All right. I had to go back. Uh, so yeah, I have it already saved out. I already have myself cut out. You can see 
I just did his hair really quickly. I just did it really, really quickly. Uh, but let's just say what you do now is you would basically uh, right click, <clears throat> make selection uh, right there, press OK. And then uh, you just go to your M tool, or not M tool, click M on your keyboard for the little shortcut. I'll uh, just to go to the rectangle marquee tool. Uh, and you just right click, select inverse. What that basically does is select everything besides what you cut out, uh, which in this case is the uh, phase adapter here. And if I press delete, I'll delete everything around it. And like I said before, let's say if you like had like you didn't cut it out perfectly, you probably you see this little black right here. Uh, like you see this little black, this is basically his chair in the background. You can't really like really can't see it that well from far away. But let's just say if you want to make it more perfect, you'd go to uh, select, modify, expand, and expand by like two or so, and press OK, and you'll see it'll basically like close in a little bit more. And if you press delete again, it'll basically delete everything. Uh, it basically keeps the same exact shape and all that cool stuff, but it kind of like cuts it out and makes it more of a better. Uh, just a better cutout overall and control D deselect and then you're ready to go <clears throat> so you yeah, look at that handsome man right there uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna double click on face adapt right here or on my picture I'm gonna put a stroke on it in my past tutorial I just kept it white and I put the size up a lot and uh, such like that but you can do that if you want but I don't do that no longer and I can actually see that I actually did not cut out the bottom of this which is pretty bad let's just quickly fix that use the eraser tool uh-huh and then this in the middle should be cut out as well. So anyways, yeah, there we go. Now let's go back to the stroke. Like I said, I used I used to use just basically a white stroke, but now what I do, I basically change my size to about seven or so, and I lower my opacity all the way to zero. The stroke opacity all the way to zero. I go to drop shadow now, change my distance all the way to zero. My spread to about uh, twenty. I'm just gonna put it at thirty, and then my size at thirty as well. <clears throat> and then you can see the outline is gonna be basically, basically be whatever the background is. Uh, I'll take the background shape because you, you, I don't have a stroke opacity on it, so you can't see the stroke. So basically, take and see the background is going to be like pulled out and it looks like really cool, like it's popped out. And it's just, I don't know, for me, when I found that out, it's just like, dude, this is sick. I'm going to be using this besides like a white stroke. Uh, I can use this as well. It looks really cool. And I'm just going to press uh, right click or a control shift. I uh, know, what am I saying? <laughs> control J to make a duplicate. I'm going to basically hide the stroke. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to use the bottom one and put a gradient overlay on it on a soft light and slow the opacity a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to hide the stroke, press Control T, and hold Shift while I'm holding the corners to make it bigger, uh, to make it perfect, you know, aspect and not change any of the, like, little, uh, just him overall. And I'm going to basically put this to soft light. And if I had the stroke on, it would look like this, so don't do that. Keep the stroke off. And I'm just going to basically lower the opacity like this. And I have a little cool little background of him in the background as well. So I'm going to actually lower the, the uh, drop shadow as well. See how black that is right here? Just lower the opacity and make it more, you know, blended in. So yeah, there we go. Something like this looks really cool. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do as well is basically change the lighting so it looks something like this. See how the lighting looks all, like all around cool and stuff like that? What we're going to do make a new layer above everything. And then I'm just going to use a, uh, I'm going to use a yellow. I did, like I did last time, I use a yellow. Press OK. I use the brush. I'm going to lower the opacity, make the hardness zero, and the size, I'm going to put it up a little bit. If uh, Really quickly, if you did not know, if you press Control, Alt, and right click and move left and right, you can make your diameter big and small for a little shortcut for your uh, eraser or your brush and such. All uh, we're going to do is we're going to simply just click one time over here, uh, a little bit bigger over here, then over here, and then we can just go over here, and we're going to go to Soft Light, and it gives a little, little, it's a little, uh, like, little hints of color and like little separate corners. And it looks really cool. It like helps out, like you know, overall just the design overall. It's like a little bit, a little bit more better of a uh, you know eye catching. I guess you can say you can see right there. And after all of that, we're gonna make a new layer. Uh, same little brush right here. We're gonna use the brush again. Make it plain white. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm just using Alt in my little scroll wheel to zoom out and zoom in. And I'm just gonna make the brush a little bit more bigger. And I'm gonna click all the way at the top. And you can see right here, it looks like really too much opacity. Just lower the opacity right here. And then you have a nice little beautiful like little light, you know, just all around, just all around, just simple, simple, evenly light around the thumbnail as well. It looks really, really good. So now what we can do is just add the text now. Uh, like I said, I already have a preset uh, text right here. Uh, what I did was I used, just used the simple fonts, just three different fonts. Uh, you can use that. You can use one simple font if you want, uh, or you can even not even have like your person or you, and you can just have the, you know, the 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 image itself not the image itself the text itself just being the overall center you don't have to have a person I just showed you how to cut out and you know put a stroke on a person if you wanted to use a person and then I just go over here double click on it <clears throat> I'm just double click on the group you can also double click on the text if you want I'm just gonna double click on the group I want to go to bevel and embos 
emboss. I never knew how to say that word. I like somebody correct me, please. And then I'm just gonna change the depth up to about 500 or so, and my size up a little bit now. And what that does is kind of like you know makes it a little more a little more cooler. Put my soften soften it up a little bit so its edges are not so like super sharp. And I'm gonna lower the opacity of the black right here, and then the white kind of give it more of a little bump. You can see here a little more of a 3D type of feel, or like it looks kind of like more of a pull out, and it looks just all around captures the eye a little bit better. Drop shadow, put this on like one distance. Uh, spread in size, you can mess around with this. The opacity, kind of lower this a little bit for me. So I have like, I'm just gonna just call out some settings for you guys to copy if you want to. I have 25 opacity, uh, one distance, 10 spread, and six size. And then for my gradient overlay, which I'm gonna click on right now, go to my blend mode, change it to soft light. I'm gonna double click on the gradient right here, double click on the black, and make it more of a gray. Press OK. And I'm gonna lower the opacity on that. And I'm gonna press OK. And there we go. Then we have our thumbnail that we basically showed you guys the exact same right here, which is a little bit different of a color. So that's basically it. I really hope you guys really enjoyed this video. You took it, and you know, I hope you guys really improved like your thumbnails overall. I know this is way better of improvement than I showed before. Uh, like you can always use simple different colors. Well, not simple different colors. I mean, like you can always use different colors. You don't have to use plain white. I just chose to use plain white. Uh, you can like overall, you learn how to do stuff like this. Is basically you know just combine text and all that cool stuff. And if you did not know as well. If you just press uh, T on your keyboard, obviously you to click back on the thumbnail to select it all. Press Control A, and then Control T brings this little table up right here. Uh, this is like basically sh uh, shows you how to separate letters and such uh, without like putting one by one letter. It separates the letters for you, uh, etc. You can use that. That's how I basically did something like this. Uh, not this. Uh, this right here. I have like adventure like separated to like basically fill off kind of like more of a rectangle little shape right here. And then just something like this, simple like this. And then also, if you guys actually want to learn how to do this little rectangle right here and cut out a little uh, number or uh, uh, text or something like I did here, uh, for Call of Duty, I have Duty cut out in like a little rectangle. Uh, if you want to learn how to do that, I'll really surely quickly, I'm like running super low on time, but make a little rectangle right here, fill it with any color you want. I'm just going to pick orange for just really quick sake. And I'm going to just put Duty back here. Uh, I'll even keep it like that. Make it a little bit more small so it fits in the rectangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically uh, use my magic wand tool, which is W on our keyboard. you got to go to magic wand. And then go to here, just uh, click on all of them, hold shift to click on all the little letters. And then what you do is go back to your little rectangle, press delete. You don't have to click on anything, just press delete. And then you can hide the word that you used, and it'll be cut out all cool like. And it'll just be, you can see the background through the letters and such. So that's a little cool little hint you can do as well. That's how I did something like this over here. So anyways, I really do hope you guys like improve your thumbnails overall, and I like I said, just all around just improved it overall. I really, really, really enjoy the, the beautiful success I have in the 20k pack. If you have yet to download it, please go download it right now. It's a really, really gorgeous pack. I have beautiful feedback from that uh, from that pack. One of my, probably my best pack. It's a 2D pack. Go download it. Link in the description below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at SysOHQ. Like the video if you like. Uh, enjoyed it overall. Comment down some new tutorials I can do. Overall. Thank you guys so much for all the support lately. I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys for 21K. Uh, just so many thank yous. I'm going to end the video right here. Peace out. Let's out. Peace.